Hey guys, uh, I had quite a few questions about my uh, macro on the GFX and my journey with macro on the GFX, uh, everything that I've gone through. Um, and I started out with the most reasonable attempt. I got the 120 macro, the GF lens, which is a great lens. Um, I wouldn't say it's a, necessarily a macro lens. It's uh, a very good close-up lens. Um, I think it's a great portrait lens as well. Um, it focuses pretty fast, um, but it's a one to two, so it doesn't really go like macro macro. Um, of course, I got the extension ring with it, the, uh, and that is uh, that's when the problems really started trying to get into like really close up macro because the extension ring uh, on that lens, on the, on the macro lens, uh, in my opinion, doesn't work very well. You, I'm actually wondering why Fuji even sells those rings because they really work with none of the lenses that I tried them on. Um, Fuji lenses are such great optical lenses and when you put the uh, extension rings on, the optical performance completely falls apart. You get chromatic aberrations, you get, uh, it, things just don't work well. Like the, the macro, for example, is not a flat field lens. So once you put the, so in the corners, it kind of, the focus areas are not flat. They're kind of go towards the, towards the corners. For close up and for portraits, it's not a problem at all. It's great. Um, actually, it can work really well. Um, with the extension rings, it's, it, it creates all kinds of problems. Corners get really fuzzy, so that doesn't work well at all. Um, I did uh, shoot a project with it that was an NFT project, and that I'm also uh, selling a, f a limited edition prints of now. I'm going to show a couple on here because um, the... It really shows what a great close-up lens that 120 macro is. Um, it draws beautifully. It's sharp. It's 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 a great lens. Just not for super close-up. What a lot of people uh, consider macro, pretty much starting at one to one. So yeah, these are a couple of the files. Um, as you guys can see, it's it's a it's a great lens. It works really well. For another project, I needed more than one to two. So that's why I was looking for um, one to one or even bigger. Um, so the, the extension ring didn't work. The Fuji macro didn't really work. Um, so I tried, I looked into it and uh, I found uh, this German company, Novoflex, um, who makes uh, bellows and uh, they make bellows for the GFX. Uh, they also let you reverse the lenses, the GF lenses, on the bellows. And Noaflex is a great company. Uh, they make great products. Uh, their representation in the U.S. is not very good, to say the least. Um, the I got the bellows. I got the. It's it's really hard to find the right rings and adapters to mount lenses and. To, reverse mount lenses and get it on the camera. Um, it was really difficult to find everything. There's not a lot of documentation on it. Um, Noaflex isn't really a big help either. Um, a lot of the stuff is uh, at B&H and at Arama and everywhere is uh, only available, non-returnable, and you have to order it. So I actually went through Noaflex directly. I figured they would give me the best uh, support. They did I did end up getting support once I started sending them emails and saying that I, you know, you gotta help me here. Um, so I tried a bunch of uh, Fuji lenses uh, with the bellows and I tried to reverse them as well, which brings like really high magnification. Um, but as before, as with the extension rings, the Fuji lenses are really made for one thing and they're optically made perfectly for what they are doing and they're great. The second you start uh, reversing them or putting rings on them, it, it just doesn't work at all. Um, so that was the, that was the uh, second thing. Um, 
I then ended up getting the Laova 100 macro uh, for Nikon mount, which worked really well. It was a pretty cheap uh, solution. Um, didn't cover the edges, but for what I had it, and for what I needed it for, it did what I, it, what I needed it for. So the next step was to look into, once that project was finished, um, built a, I was looking into the Pentax lenses and started playing with that a little bit and um, found that the, with the rings, the Pentax lenses actually work pretty well. Um, I showed you that guys that in the other video. Um, and I ended up getting the, uh, this is the macro. Actually, this is one of the macro lenses. This is the uh, 134, the 135, sorry, uh, macro. Um, and I did some tests with this. Uh, again, I wouldn't call this a macro lens. Um, it's a, it's a close-up lens. Uh, with the rings, it gets pretty good magnification. Optically, it's not that great of a lens. I'll show you guys a couple of things. Um, it's a, I think it's a really old design, actually. Um, they do have another 100 macro, which is supposedly a better... I can't get this on here. Um, which is supposedly a better design. Um, I actually... And I'll show you a couple of images from this lens. Um, because there's some serious uh, optical issues with it. I'll show you guys, but... Um... Okay, so I figured it would be easier if I would just uh, show you guys uh, the what's actually happening here with that 135 Pentax macro. So these uh, just went to the beach. Uh, this is a... Let me start with this shot. Because this shot, as you can see when it renders, this is the this is the halation that this uh, lens produces. Highlight areas, extreme highlight areas. I mean, this is on the beach in the sun uh, at around noon, so it's pretty intense. But as you guys can see, this is what happens with that lens. Um, when you take that pretty much that same shot out of focus, this is what happens. You can see the, uh, I shot this pretty wide open, maybe at maybe one or two stops uh, down. So maybe uh, 5.6 or, or eight or somewhere in between. Um, you can see that that's what that looks like. Uh, again, that is, on that lens. I said it was a pretty good, uh, pretty decent portrait lens, but even, so the, the rendering is good. I like that, uh, but you can also see the same thing here. Uh, it's the classic red glow. It's, it's halation. Uh, this, I'm, pretty sure that in the studio, or if this is not a backlit situation, or it's such a extreme highlight situation, um, this would probably be okay, uh, especially for black and white, obviously. Um, yeah, so something to keep in mind. Uh, I also wanted to show you guys, this is I shot everything handheld, so this is actually tilted head, uh, handheld. As you can see, this is an impossible shot to get this all in focus without having a tilt on it. Um, this is with the 135. It's just beach, but you can see every single highlight has the uh, you know the red ring around it. Um, This is stopped down a little bit and not uh, more exposing for the highlights not to blow them. And obviously there aren't many specular highlights in this one. Um, and this one actually works just fine. Uh, again, this is an impossible shot uh, without tilt. This is handheld, so it's not a perfect tilt um, because it loses up here. 
Uh, there is another one here. Again, specular highlights right there, little dots. And uh, not as bad, but the exposure is down a little bit on this one as well. So controllable. Uh, again, in this shot, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure if uh, this was controlled. I, I chose this shot and I shot this because I could literally see it in the finder. Um, that's how bad it was. So uh, these are, let me see, this is with the 50. Again, slight tilt against that wall, shot wide open. Uh, you can see where the fall off is kind of a little bit weird because this is in focus. This is not, which it obviously wouldn't be if it wasn't a tilt. Um, actually, in this case, it's a swing because I'm shooting a horizontal eye and I uh, rotated the lens to have a, a swing on it. But um, open shade, lens renders beautifully. Works really well. This is the 55. And uh, this is another example of an, a shot that would not be possible without uh, tilt because, as you can see, I just, again, handheld. I tried to get this rock in focus. You can see where the, this is wide open. So this falls off right behind it because it's actually below it. But the... Uh, uh, this tree is in focus so and this up here is not because that's where it um the plane of focus is this is not in the plane of focus so not a great shot i'm not i'm not uh i just wanted to see if i could do this and this is handheld so i was able to get this which is was right in front of me and this in focus um, obviously with the tripod uh, different story so anyway just wanted to uh, show you guys this I did end up actually liking this uh, more as a portrait lens and I think it's a as a close-up portrait lens um, I think this is the best use for this specific lens so um, as with all these lenses you kind of try and try and then they find a, the perfect use for it. I think it was, I think this lens was less than $100 on eBay plus shipping. Um, so, you know, it's not that bad. Um, the, I believe the 100 macro is a newer design and is more expensive. So that is, uh, I'm going to look into that as well. Um, but for now, I think I'm covered in terms of the Pentax macro system. I will try and get the new uh, Fuji Tilt Shift 100 uh, lens because it is a macro lens. But um, just like with the 120, it is a close-up lens. Um, it, I believe it goes to 1 to 2. I'm pretty sure rings are not going to work on that. Um, so again, it's a little bit, uh, it's not a true macro lens. Um, it's a close-up lens for product. I'm sure it's absolutely fantastic. So in general, and to sum this up, uh, I have not yet found the perfect solution for shooting macro on the GFX. Um, Novaflex does make bellows and a lens uh, that was not available for me. I couldn't find that lens anywhere. Um, maybe that is the perfect solution in terms of really high close up, like uh, high resolution, two to one or, or even higher. Um, maybe that is the best solution for macro on the GFX. Um, I know that the 120 Fuji is not. Um, I don't think the new tilt shift will be either. Uh, there is another, I think it is a Laova 200 millimeter lens that just came out with actually GFX mount um, that is supposed to uh, 
be up to two to one, so I might look into that one. Um, one other thing that with macro is that I'm not a huge fan. I, I know that 200 millimeter macro is great for the working distance. Um, I do like getting up closer to the object. Um, it looks slightly different. Uh, there's a there's a little bit of a I don't really like the telephoto effect of longer lenses on macro either. Um, I'm not a big fan of telephoto lenses or longer lenses in general. Um, so I still actually, even with this 135, I do still prefer the 55 with the extension rings, um, which gives me pretty high uh, magnification. Um, but I just think I do like that. Uh, I do like the way the spatial uh, relation uh, of that, uh, of the shorter focal lengths. There are obviously a lot of third party lenses, a lot of older glass um, that I haven't looked at. Uh, there's a lot of contacts, there's a lot of, uh, 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 there's a lot of great lenses out there that I haven't even, that I haven't even looked at. If anyone finds something, I would love to hear it. Please let me know in the, in the comments. Um, something that is a, and I do see this with these older lenses that optically, especially I guess when it gets into macro, that ultimate sharpness and crispness that, for example, the GF does have with uh, close-up photography, um, is just not quite there with these Pentax lenses. Yeah, a lot of it can be done in post-production and everything, but it's not the same thing. I hope this helped you guys, and uh, yeah, I will keep working on this. Thanks.